Uh, Dustin, Dustin Gold, where is, where is he? He's the fellow that produced it. Where, uh, What, what, what are you guys doing here? What, what's going on? Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Now, uh, I know that you're Republicans, but that welcome was pretty weak. So, listen, I'm going to go backstage, and you're going to try that again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. How you doing, Louisiana? Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. That is a welcome. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Yes, we can. Uh, God bless you. Now, now, that's enough. It's my turn to speak. <laughs> now, it, it's great to be back in New Orleans. Now, is it hot outside or is it just Al Gore? <laughs> now, let me be clear. Let me be clear. I'm here today to extend an olive branch to the Republican Party. Now, I don't want to ruffle any feathers here today, but would you all mind uh, uh, changing this room around according to the uh, pre-1967 seating arrangements? So you over there, maybe over there, and you there. Now, I must thank the chairman of the National Republican Committee for all that you do. Uh, what is it exactly that you do? Oh, well, that's right. I appreciate you. I really do. Uh, Reince Priebus. That name sounds a little fishy. <laughs> uh, can someone call Donald Trump and, and verify his birth certificate? <laughs> now, I think we can all agree that an event like this needs a voice from Washington, a voice of reason, a voice of hope. Uh, someone is going to look you right in the eye, uh, give you a big hug, and let you know everything's going to be okay. Uh, unfortunately, Michelle couldn't be here. <laughs> now, when Vice President Joe Biden heard I was coming here today, uh, he, he truly wanted to be here. He was so excited. He, he pulled me in close. He held me tight. <laughs> he leaned in, uh, just like that. And, and he whispered in my ear, this is a big effing deal. And that's why I said, I know. That's why you're staying here. <laughs> but you may be asking yourself, what is the president doing here today? The budget's out of control. Uh, the deficit is rapidly growing. And there are threats of a government shutdown. So uh, I figured I'd do what any great president would do in these trying times head down to Louisiana and polish up on my golf game. <laughs> Looking good. But I love vacations. Uh, a few months back, uh, the family and I took a nice relaxing vacation uh, in the state of my birth, Hawaii, or as the tea partiers still call it, Kenya. But time does fly when you're having fun. 
And we're more than halfway through June already. Now, uh, my favorite month is February, Black History Month. You see, Michelle, she celebrates the full month, and, you know, uh, I celebrate half. <laughs> My father was a black man from Kenya, and my mother was a white woman from Kansas. So yes, my mother loved a black man, and no, she was not a Kardashian. Uh, now, most of you know I still haven't been able to quit smoking, and I'm afraid I might need some outside help. Uh, take a look at this picture someone snapped at me on the 2008 campaign. <laughs> yeah, one year later, someone snapped this photo. <laughs> I need help. Somebody. But the worst part is presidents age so quickly. Now look, this is General uh, George Washington before he agreed to be our first president. He's looking nice and young. Uh, this is President Washington while he was our president. And this is George Washington today. Oh, yeah. You see what I mean? Now, here's... Uh, w before 9-11. He's looking good, decisive, on point. And now after 9-11. Not so good. He's confused. Now, look at this. I love this photo. Uh, we are ready to take on the world. I had my team of experts use the latest computer technology to predict what Michelle and I are going to look like at the end of my first term. <laughs> but... Despite all that, uh, at the halfway point in the most historic presidency in the history of the United States, I've got two words for each and every one of you. You're welcome. <laughs> now, you're welcome for the thriving economy that I helped to create. You're welcome for the peaceful relations in the Middle East that I helped to forge. And you're welcome for the gift of humility, which I've given to Anthony Weiner. <laughs> That's right. I may have given him the gift of humility, but you paid for that cute little towel. But truth be told, I never was a fan of Weiner. That boy was always trying to one-up me. I released my long-form birth certificate. He releases his long-form Twitter photo. <laughs> now, I must say that the state of our union is uh, not good. Uh, the debt is rapidly growing. Unemployment is quickly rising, and people are being forced from their homes. I feel their pain, because in two years, that could be me. <laughs> oh, settle down. Settle down. <laughs> That's enough out of you. Now... I was criticized for joking about shovel-ready jobs uh, the other day, 
But the truth is, we need to build tunnels and bridges. Uh, that way people would have something to live under. <laughs> or jump off of. Now, in a recent poll, uh, only 15% of Americans believe that there will be a Great Depression. Uh, but the bad news for me, the other 85% believe it will only be a very good depression. <laughs> now, I'm proud to say that we're finding great strides, uh, we're making great strides in finding non-combat solutions uh, to finally deal with Muammar Gaddafi, uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, and Kim Jong-il, or as we refer to them in the Situation Room, uh, two and a half men. Look at little Tim, isn't he cute? Uh, little, little man. Now, Attorney General Eric Holder, at my direction, will be fighting uh, Alabama's controversial immigration bill that's even more extreme than that of Arizona's. It states that the police have the probable cause to check anyone's immigration uh, status if their complexion is greater than or equal to that of John the Crybaby Boehner's. You want to see my impression of uh, Speaker Boehner? Here we go. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I've been working on that for months. I don't know why that man cries so much. Those spray tans aren't cheap. $40. Now, let me be clear. I am against any state interfering with federal immigration law. Uh, shortly after Arizona passed its bill, I received a letter that said, Mr. President, uh, I was born in this country. I get up early every day. Uh, I work extremely hard, come home to my wife and my kids. And still, the police stop me and question my intentions. I don't think Senator McCain should be treated that way. <laughs> or do I? Now, I'm proud of all that. But listening to the attacks from my opponents and the right-wing media, you would think I haven't gotten anything done. But, you know, it's true what Harry Truman once said. If you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. So I did. Uh, his name's Bo. Uh, there he is, a good boy. Uh, actually, his full name's Bo Diddley. <laughs> now, Bo comes from my initials, Barack Obama. And Diddley represents the amount of support I've gotten from Fox News. But he sleeps out in his doghouse every night out, out there in the Rose Garden. But it's not a new doghouse. From what I'm told, Bill Clinton slept in it a lot. <laughs> but perhaps my expectations were too high when I took this job. You know, as you can recall, my slogan was, yes, we can. And I got to admit, I thought we could. But apparently, no, we can't. So, in front of you all here today, this afternoon, I'm unveiling my new slogan. I killed Osama. What do you think? Yeah. It wasn't George Bush, it wasn't Dick Cheney, that was me. I did that for you. So, you know, uh, uh, that's my new slogan, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> but you right-wingers should be proud of me because the mission to capture Bin Laden wasn't only successful in that I killed him, and I also, uh, in cooperation with two of my uh, bigger liberal supporters, 
proved that you were correct after all. Torture does work. <laughs> Who'd have thought? But the economy is frail. It's barely moving. It's gasping for air and desperately clinging to life, uh, just like Newt Gingrich's campaign. Now, come on. He's in serious trouble. His consultants are dropping faster than Anthony Weiner's pants in an AOL chat room. But now, speaking of candidates, a little birdie told me that uh, you're all looking for someone to challenge me in 2012. Yeah. Really? Well, how's that going for you? Okay. Well, let's see. You got your front runner, uh, Mitt Romney. Now, don't get me wrong. He might make a great president along with his first lady, uh, second lady, uh, third lady. <laughs> now, it's unfortunate that Tim Pawlenty couldn't make it here, but cut him some slack. He's having his foot surgically removed from his mouth. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. Luckily for him, it's covered under Obamacare. So, yeah, that along, along with spinal transplants. <laughs> yeah. Come on. John King served him up a ball softer than Barney Frank's backside. <laughs> now, because of him, people are asking me, uh, when am I going to explain the details of my health care plan? And I've got three words for you. So am I. <laughs> now the Donald. Remember him? Yeah, he chose not to run as a Republican, but uh, he's now threatening to run as an independent. But the only thing running independent of Donald Trump is his hair. <laughs> now we got... Michelle Bachman. Now, what can I say about Michelle Bachman that she hasn't already said about herself? Uh, the other day, she called me a one-term president. One syllable president. Um, gotta go. God bless you. God bless the United States. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Are y'all still pumped? I started I started out